Okay, so, um, so now, again, like I said, what you wanna do, and I'm gonna go all the way back out so I can show you again, okay? So what you wanna do in order to look at some of the waveforms, what I would suggest, if you're having trouble with the waveforms, is simply go to PicoScope Automotive, which is up here, uh, opposed to this PicoScope Diagnostics, which is down here. So go to Automotive, go like so, okay? And then um, from this site, you simply click on Automotive, like so. Go to Charging and Starting, go to Relative Compression, and Petrol. And it brings up the, the instructions, right? And once it brings up the instructions, you can look at you know how to hook it up, et cetera. But then here is a, is a waveform. So this is going to be your relative compression waveform. Okay. Remember that we hooked it up to the to the amperage side or voltage side, but typically the amperage side. And and that tells us in, in, in this case that all the cylinders are are pumping, okay, because that's what we're actually looking at. We're looking at pumping pressure. We're looking at all the cylinders are pumping evenly. But if we have something like this. Well, we can tell we can look at it and tell right off the bat that this cylinder, whichever it is, is not pumping, right? Because it doesn't have the the pressure cycle. Only it, it has the, it doesn't have no pressure cycle at all. It's missing. Okay, but then, but then again, we don't need we don't know what um, what cylinder that is. Okay, so if we have a if we have this, we can move on. We we can we can pretty much rest assured the engines are the engine is pretty sound. It's pumping properly. But then if we have that, then we have to figure out well which cylinder is it. And to figure that out, I'd have to go to, to my channel B. So I'd have to go up here and I'd have to open my channel B, okay, right up here, open my channel B. And then I'd have to um, simply uh, apply um, that channel to, to sync the cylinder. And I would sync it to number one, right? I'd sync it to number one by putting the leads, positive and negative. I'd put the positive um, well, let's start with the negative. I'd put the negative on any good negative ground, right? Any ground. And then I'd put my positive on the negative side of the coil, okay? Or in other words, whatever our, um, wherever our switching device connects to, which would be the negative side of the coil. Even if it's a two, three, or four wire coil, it'll always have a negative side. Again, the, the side that, that goes to the switch. The only, the only thing you got to be careful with that is that Sometimes coils, especially when we get into the four wire variety, they might have a ground, which is just a ground to, to ground the, the, like the module. And then they'll have a ground that goes to the switching device. That's the ground you want, the one that goes to the switching device. So you'd have to look up with a wiring schematic and figure out which ground that is. Once you do that, then we'll, a, we'll be able to get a, uh, we'll be able to get a sync. We'll be, we'll be able to see a strike. So let's say that our strike, for example, and let me see if I can get an annotator here. Yeah, here we go. So, so let's say that our strike is, let's say that our strike that, that we that we sync number one to here, okay? So this is where our strike's gonna show up, okay? And then it's gonna go like that. It's gonna go maybe go like this, this. Um, one, two, three, four, and then, and then another one like that, something like that, right? And so these will be, these, these would be our number one. Okay, this would be number one because we ho we're hooked up to number one and then this would be number one again. Okay, why? Because we're hooked up to number one. Okay, and so it'd be, so then I could figure out because I know that on a four cylinder, which this is apparently, I know that the firing order is one, three, four, two, one, three, four, et cetera. So I know that one, three, so I know it's number four. Oh, it's number four cylinder that's acting up, okay? So that's a cylinder that's that's giving me the problems, okay? So that's how we would that's how we would sync that up, okay? For that for that pattern. Okay, and remember, you, what, what are we gonna hook up? We're gonna hook up to the negative side of the coil or like I said, the side where the switching device grounds it, which again is considered the negative side of the coil, okay? All right, let me clear that. Okay, uh, okay, so besides that, let me get out, rid of, out of annotator here. And besides that, let's go back to other, uh, let's go over here and then I'll show you some other waveforms, okay? So the other waveforms that you are gonna be on the pressure side, okay? And then, so we're gonna go to the pressure sensors, WPS, 
WPS 500X, okay, uh, which sounds like a Terminator model, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the Terminator WSPS, WPS 500X, that sounds, yeah. Okay, anyway, so the first one is we'll do intake manifold and we'll do, and I'll just show you running, okay? So this is basically, we're gonna do a vacuum test with a DSO, okay? So this that's what this is, a vacuum test. And then we're gonna look and we're going to um, look here and notice that it tells us all about how to set it up, okay? And then, so here's our vacuum waveform, okay? There's our vacuum waveform. This is how much vacuum the engine is pulling, okay? And you notice that it's uh, plus or minus one bar, that's what it's set at. So we're, we're looking at about point, well, I can actually, if I drag it down, I can get exactly how much it is, but I would say it's two, three, four, five, so it's five, six, seven, eight. So it's about six and a half bar, okay? Six and a half bar. So you'd have to do the math to calculate exactly how much vacuum that is. The, when we did it, it was actually in PSI, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, it was actually in PSI. So if it's PSI, we just got to multiply it times two. If it's in at bar, um, I forgot what the actual calculation is, but you can always look it up. Just look up what the conversion from bar, because this is America. We don't talk in bar, right? Um, mm -hmm. So so just look up what the calculation is from bar to uh, to to uh, to inches of vacuum. Okay. Actually, you can you can skip a step instead of going from bar to psi. You can go from bar directly to inches of vacuum. Do the do that mathematic uh, uh, equation. You can find the conversion. I mean, you can Google it. You can find it on all data and just and then figure out how much vacuum that is. So that's the first. So that's a that's basically just a vacuum reading waveform. But then we have the other vacuum reading waveform. So that's the pulses, right? This is when when we change when we change the transducer and we zoom in. Now we actually have the pulses. Now that's not going to tell me how much vacuum I have. That's just showing me that my pulses in my intake manifold are nice and even. If I would have a pattern, let me show, see if it shows a bad pattern, and it does not really, okay? But if I had a bad pattern, it would kind of look like the one that I just showed you for the relative compression where some, some or all or, or a good um, number of the, of the pressure pulses would be missing, you understand? Yeah. So we'd have like a flat area, like let's say, let me, let me use my annotator again. I think I can, yeah, let me see, where's my annotator? Where's my annotator at? Oh, there it is, annotator. Come on. There it is, annotate. Okay, and oops. Let's see. Uh, let me get rid of it like that. Let me, let me put it back up here. Oh, this one. And then all that. Okay. So if, if this was like coming up like this and then all of a sudden it, it kind of looked like this and then it went back to back to normal again, right? This is the way it is. And then it was like this, but I had that one area that was flat, okay? Then, or just different, even if it's just different, we got to consider it. Then what I'd have to do is I would have to basically go and use this. Let me, let me get rid of that marking. Okay. Okay. Get rid of annotator. All right. And then so then I'd have to go down here and I'd actually guess what? I'd have to sync it again. I'd have to sync it to number one, right? Just like they're doing right here. And then I'd have to figure out which cylinder. See that? Then I could figure out which cylinder uh, and actually which stroke is actually the one that's giving me the, the problem. See that? So that's pretty cool. Okay. So that's uh, what you got to basically remember on this one is just the the pulses. Okay, that's that's a vac that's a vacuum um, waveform, and then and then that's actually the vacuum reading. Okay, um, so you got three so far, right? You got you got the relative compression, you got the vacuum reading, and then now you got the vacuum waveform. Okay, and there's basically only one other one that you got to remember, and that's going to be. Let me get out of here again, and. Again, go back to pressure sensors, WPS 500. Uh, now we're gonna go in cylinder and in cylinder. Um, well, let's do both. Cranking, cause you, yeah, I forgot there's two more, I'm sorry. There's two more. One is gonna be the cranking. And you just gotta remember that the cranking compression test waveform is gonna look like that. Oops, right, it's gonna look like that, okay? 
Remember, you'll know because it'll it'll have the high 177. Okay. So that's what the cranking compression waveform is going to look like. And then the other one you got to remember is going to be the in cylinder running compression. And the running compression waveform is going to look like this. I don't know what type that is. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in this one, you just got to remember what you got to remember on this one, Neil, is is you all besides it that it's the running compression. You got to remember that it's going to be about half of the regular compression test. So that's one thing you got to remember. The running compression should always be about half of the of the static compression or or, or the or just a cranking compression. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. And the other thing you got to remember is that that the individual cycles. Okay. So remember. Since this is the this is the this is the pressure cycle, then that means that this first section here, that's going to be the power. Okay, so remember that we got intake, uh, we got intake, um, intake compression, intake compression, power and exhaust. Right, that's the way we usually say it. But in this language, since if we're going to start here, then we got to go, we got to say power. Okay, this is where it's going to come down. Power exhaust, okay, intake, compression, okay, one more time, power, because because we're pushing down, we have, we have, this is, this is, a, this is where the compression cycle is, but, but let's start here and say, this is power, okay, after, after we, after we, we uh, have power in the, in the cycle, then we have exhaust, so this is the exhaust side, okay, then we have intake again, and then we have compression, Okay, so if you want to go the other way, you can say intake, compression, power, exhaust, if that helps you remember it easier. So then you would start here, right? Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. It doesn't matter where you start. Well, it does because, well, yeah, I mean, yeah you're, you're right. It doesn't matter where you start. It's, it's always going to cycle the same. Just remember, this is always going to be, on this side, it's going to be the compression side, and this side is going to be the power side. Okay, compression, power compression, power, compression, power. So we've got power, um, exhaust, intake, compression, power, exhaust, intake, compression, power, exhaust, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Okay. Okay, um, so those are the basic waveforms. Those are the basic waveforms for the, um, for, the, um, for the engine testing, okay? Um, what about the waveforms? How are you doing on the waveforms for the um, for the pickup device, what for the ignition on the ignition side. Um, I think I may be struggling with that as well. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Hey guys, those are my vicious chihuahuas. <laughs> They're usually not on this side of the house uh, in my office at this time, but somehow they got over here. Okay. <coughs> Hey, calm down. Shh, be quiet. Okay, there you go. All right. So I'm going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my. I think the easier way to, for me to do it is I'm going to just draw on a whiteboard. Okay. okay. And so so remember that there's three signals you gotta you gotta remember you gotta remember. Okay. There's there's your there's or three types of, of trigger devices, okay? One, one is gonna be your, what is gonna be is your, your um, permanent magnet generator, okay? Or, or what we call our magnetic device. And then we're gonna have our hall device or hall, um, hall of, what we call the hall effect switch. I'm not gonna write the whole thing out. I just write, I'll just write hall. The hall effect switch permanent magnet generator, Hall effect switch, and then we have our optical, okay? Optical. Okay, so each one of those, okay, you gotta remember that permanent magnet generator, it's an AC current, okay, AC current. It creates its own vo voltage because it's a generator, so it creates its own voltage, okay? It's typically a two wire, okay? Typically a two wire, 
sorry, my writing, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit here, but it's typically a two wire, okay? And it's gonna be a sine wave, okay? That looks something like this. Okay, I know that's pretty awful, but it's, it's gonna be a sine wave, okay? Permanent magnet generator, a, a generator AC, two wire, remember, remember we also call it the magnetic sensor or mag magnetic trigger, okay? Um, and it produces a sine wave, okay? It produces a sine wave. We also call that analog, but, but um, so either is correct, okay? And it's sine, S-I-N-E, okay? It's a sine wave. The hall, uh, conventionally it's a three wire, but there, it can also be a two wire, okay? So a true hall is a three wire, but now nowadays there's, there's very many two wire hall effect switches, okay? This is uh, runs off of DC voltage. That is, it requires voltage to operate. We always have to have voltage to operate. This one, no voltage, it creates its own. The hall requires voltage, okay? And, it, and a DC is gonna be a square wave or digital waveform, okay? So this is a, the, the first one is a AC, okay? And it's a sine analog. This one's DC and it's a square digital, okay? And then the optical is identical to this, okay? So the optical is typically, but the optical is typically a three wire, okay? And it's DC and it produces a square wave, okay? The only difference between the hall and, and the optical is that the optical actually, the way it operates is that it has a disc and then the disc has like little holes cut into it like that all the way around. They're supposed, they're supposed to be even. Okay, this looks more like a chocolate chip cookie, but I guess I'm just hungry. Um, so it's like a little disc that spins and it has a light that actually shows through here. And that light, when it, when it hits the reflector, it actually uh, will, will, will create high voltage. And then when there's no light, low voltage, high voltage, no voltage, right? As the light reflects, hits the reflector, yeah. high, low, high, low, high, low. So it actually ends up being very similar to this digital waveform, okay? So those are the three you gotta remember about that for your, um, for your, um, uh, for the other waveforms. And I think that's about it, okay? Uh, let me clear this. Any questions on this part? See. So the reading between hall and optical, how can you actually tell? You can't. If you if you're looking at it on a on a waveform, you'll you'll you won't know the difference. It, it's just it's just a square wave. The only thing we can we can do is like make sure that it's a nice healthy looking waveform, right? The only way you're gonna know that it's optical is 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 either by looking at the description, you know, to to figure out how this how the thing works. Like we look on all data sometimes to figure out how things work or by physically taking it apart and looking under the distributor cap and looking for the optical sensor. That's the only way we're gonna tell. You can't, you can't tell unless you're, unless you're uh, again, uh, looking at the system description or, or, or doing a physical uh, 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 inspection of it. Okay. Okay. And it doesn't really matter, right? Cause it doesn't really matter. Cause if we're gonna, if we're gonna be looking at, this, at, the, at the signal and it's nice and square and healthy like that, then we don't got to we, we don't have to worry about it it's it's working fine if if there was a problem let's say that the next pattern coming up like this was kind of like did this right and then we and then we had a square square and all of a sudden it it, it did this again right and we had a nice square oh we said oh okay look i see something's going on here and here so i have to physically first th first thing i want to do is i want to physically inspect my device and then i go and then i i i i remove the distributor cap right, or, or, or what, which is the type that it usually has. And then I see, oh, it's actually an optical distributor, okay, or an optical trigger device, right? Then I would probably just look and see, look at my three wires and I would figure out, okay, do I got the proper voltage going in? Okay, 12 volts, do I have, uh, let me erase some of that. Do I have my, my 12 volts? Uh, Do I have my 12 volts going in? Do I have my, my proper signal going out? And do I have my ground, right? And then 
then if, if these three were okay, then I know that my optical device, the actual component was defective and I would replace it, okay? Same thing with a hall. If, if I had a signal that looked like this, then I would look and see, and it works exactly the same. It has 12 volts, a signal and a ground. The hall does, okay? okay. So, so, so if these three were intact, then I would know that my actual hall device would be defective, okay? Um, so, uh, okay. Any other thing on this one? Nope, I am good. Okay, let me go ahead and clear my drawings. And go back this way. And I think that's about all the, um, I think that's all about uh, um, um, the, what do you call it? All the waveforms you'll have to worry about. I can't think of any others, okay? Okay, uh, nothing in the fuel system. Um, waveforms in the fuel system. Well, yeah, the injector waveforms. Yeah, so in the in the fuel system, there's the injector waveforms, and the and the and the um, and the uh, injector current ramping. So that, yeah, let's look at those. That's a good idea. So let me share my screen again, and then I'll go to. Let's see here. So if I just share it here, I thought I had Pico open, and. Oh, I don't want to go to Viper, sorry. I want to go to share, but I want to share this one. Okay, and then let's go back to Pico. So again, most of your waveforms you can find here, actually, if you want to look at what, what they're supposed to look like. Okay. Okay, and so, and then, so if you want, so just go to automotive. Let's just go to automotive. And then, um, and by the way, you can just, you can download this software. Okay, just if you want to, just, you just go to Pico, download whatever, and then you can download this software. You can do the same thing I'm doing. Um, okay. Yeah, it's free of charge and everything. Uh, so then I'm gonna go to actuators, and I'm gonna go to injector, petrol, and just, you can just go to uh, see multi-point, which is the ones we're gonna be working with. Um, and, and, and see, there's both of them right here, voltage and current. So what is the, what is the voltage one gonna look like? The voltage is gonna look just like this. Okay, so that's what our, our injector voltage should look like, right? Injector's off, we have about, about 14 volts. Then the injector turns on, it draws down to zero. Injector shuts off again, we get that ginormous voltage spike and then it, goes back to zero, okay? Then here, when it comes back here, it turns on again. So that's what that's what the voltage on the injector will look like, okay? Okay. And, and then let's go and look, let's look at the current one. Uh, oh, let's go like that. So for this test, voltage. we have to do both in voltage and amperage? Um, well, I can't really tell you exactly what's gonna be on it, but you should know them anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to inject your petrol, and I'm going to inject your current. So you should. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not a, a, a difficult you know, a waveform to remember. And that this is what our 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 current's going to look like. Okay. Which is the ramping one. Yeah, it's a ramping one. Remember, that's a little pintle where the actual injector opens. Okay. And then and and uh, um, and then this is this is this is the. As, as it opens all the way and it's held open, then it shuts back down again, okay? Um, and that's it. So that's, um, and you, I already told you about the ignition one. I told you about the uh, compression. I think that's that's pretty much all the waveforms you're gonna have to uh, be, you, you'll, you'll have to consider when we're, uh, okay. when we're doing that, okay? Yeah. Okay, um, anything else? Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, um, okay um, I'm going to go ahead then um, and stop the share. I'm also going to stop recording. Um, I don't, okay, all right, Neil, I'm going to stop recording now.